Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I am that props girl and today I wanted to talk to you about a production of Overflow which I saw at Darlinghurst Theatre Company in Sydney. Now when I saw the production it was in 2022 and I honestly love the production. I walked in knowing absolutely nothing about the play and I walked out completely just in awe, shocked, feeling so many things and, and like good things. Uh, but it was definitely a play that really made you think and I thought the actor who was in the show was absolutely incredible. It was such a high quality production and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit today. So that's what we are going to do. Give this video a like if you do enjoy it and consider hitting that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss a single one of my uploads. And with all that said and done, let's jump straight into this video. All right, so if you haven't been to Darlinghurst Theatre, the stage itself is quite large. They were really clever and condensed it down. So the actual set itself was raised on a platform or a truck uh, and it had a lip and perimeter around it. Now, when I first walked into the building, I will put up a photo, this is what I saw. And it was really cool because the rest of the stage was blacked out and you just saw this little unit and basically they made it like a um, club or pub, um, definitely a club, um, like cubicle toilet arrangement. So when you saw it, you knew exactly, okay, this is the setting. It looks like cubicle bathroom setup that you would see. So it's, it's clearly a public bathroom. Um, everything was done with a lot of metal and a lot of cold colors. So the tiles looked black. So a lot of, as I said, like dark grungy colors. And I think that, that was very specific. There's a reason why they did that. And I think it was to make it feel cold and to make you feel isolated and all those sorts of things. And to really bring that tone and emotion down. And um, I think as well, bathrooms are such an intimate space. They can be very awkward and they're not places that people want to linger in. This trans girl is in this bathroom and she stays in this bathroom and she's hiding from people who are outside um, the door trying to um, get to her and she ends up um, like destroying the bathroom and all that sort of stuff but they really wanted to make a point of saying this is not a place that you'd normally want to be in so she's in here because she has to be but they also talked about how the bathroom can be a really safe place um, and it can be a community place where you know all the girls sort of do their makeup and stuff together and um, yeah it talked about a lot of really amazing issues but um, if you are interested in the play itself either look it up to read it or try and find a production somewhere. I'm sure there's also some stuff on YouTube about it as well. The lighting was extremely clever. There was a lot of hidden lighting in the set as well. So up the top and around the sides there were um, probably, I think they were LED strips, but basically they seemingly looked like fluorescent lighting for the majority of the show. So they used a lot of cold colors again as well to create that sort of environment there were moments in time where there was a tv in like a flashback type situation so there was a side light that came on and that was a slightly warmer color and it flickered to give you the uh difference there in you know the bathroom to the flashback and that was really really clever and then when you were having these moments where you were sort of in the club and, and partying again in a flashback the lighting would change again and you would have these um LEDs that sort of change into like different colors and it really just juxtaposed that cold setting of the bathroom. The sound was also really good as well and it had like a it, it wasn't surround but it felt like it was and it sort of and it may have been surround they may have put in extra speakers I'm not quite sure but it really made you feel like you were hemmed in because the actor would be talking and then all of a sudden you would hear this like hammering bang on the door and it was like oh my gosh the story of overflow is so gripping and you're very much with them in on this journey and i was not expecting to be so drawn in especially since it's a one person show but oh wow it was just so incredible i also want to talk about the water so as i said when i walked in i noticed that there was a lip on the edge of the stage and I thought that that well the edge of the set and I thought that that was slightly strange but I did wonder is there going to be water and there was there was a very long sink and it overflowed there was also leaking from the roof 
and one of the toilets overflowed as well and I guess that's why it's called overflow but it was so incredible and again the dripping it's, I think it started with the dripping at the top and you know how a drip is just annoying and like that like the Chinese water torture it is annoying um, I can't stand dripping traps. I have dripping taps in my bathroom at the moment. It's just, it's so frustrating. But it built that tension because there was a time limit on how long she could stay in this bathroom. And it was kind of like counting the seconds. And then she started to flood the bathroom um, and made the sink overflow. And that took a long time. Like she put paper towel in the sink to make it overflow. And she did that very early on. Now it took at least... 10 to 15 minutes for that sink to overflow but when it did again the tension was rising because I was going oh my gosh this is going to go everywhere all over the floor what's going to happen um and the same thing when the toilet overflowed so the use of the water was extremely clever I've never seen anything like that before it was extremely cool and I know this comes down to directing but like the actor had to lay in the water and I feel so sorry but also so in awe of the props person who would have had to clean up afterwards because she had a lot of things in her handbag and there were items you know in the bin and all littered through the set that ended up in the water and it's just one of those things that I go oh my gosh some poor props person has first of all put them there and is going to have to pack them all up and I think that that's one of those things that you know people forget about is we have to reset everything it's a whole process and um if we're not there, it doesn't get done. So just a plug to props as always. Do you know that Friends episode where they're like throwing the wet paper towels? Um, there was an incident in my primary school where there was a wet paper towel all over the bathroom and I remember it was such a big deal and they were trying to track down, you know, who did it and um, it happened in this story and, and it added to the story, it added to the, um, the tension of this story. It was so, so clever. I also really loved the costuming. I thought that was particularly good, very, very clever. And, but also, and I mentioned this in my Godspell review of Hey Cedar, I also loved that they extended the feel and vibe of the bathroom into the actual bathrooms in the foyer of the building. So in the bathroom there it was very darkly lit so they changed the lighting in there but also they um have you ever, ever been into a public bathroom you know you see people have like written on the walls and the doors and that sort of thing you were allowed to they actually had pens there and you could write messages and all that sort of stuff on them and like most of them were pretty uplifting and I wrote one too um and I thought that that was really cool and it's really interesting that the feel and vibe of shows is starting to extend more to the foyers now because theatre is a whole encapsulating experience and I think that that's a really cool thing to sort of ease the audience into the story so they're not walking in and being potentially jarred by what they see. On the whole it was an incredible production and I absolutely loved it. I one of my favorite quotes and I can't remember it exactly but it was a talking about the glass ceiling and how you can spend so much time you know fighting your way through it and then only to be cut by the glass as you pull yourself through and uh, that just really sat with me and I thought wow that's actually so true is that as a society we can spend so much time you know trying to push through the glass ceiling and sometimes it comes back around and cuts us, it bites us. To be a woman in this world, let alone a trans woman, it really opened my eyes to the beautiful, tragic, and, you know, sad and difficulties that the trans community go through. And it was such a beautiful educational play as well. So credit to Dalo for actually putting on a show like that. But five stars, honestly, it was amazing. I love the line, and this is a direct quote, is that club toilets have taught me more about the sisterhood than any book. And I think it's very true that, you know, you do see the real side of people in the bathrooms and sometimes you can make friends in the bathroom and you don't even know their names, but people, you know, you can have the best conversations with someone or you, or it's very, very quiet, you know, it's, it's an interesting place to be. And credit to the actor who honestly captivated us for the entire play. I was mesmerized and it takes an extremely strong actor to do that and 
it was just brilliant so an extremely extremely good play if you ever get the chance to see overflow go and see it it is a brilliant show i hope you guys enjoyed this review of overflow um when i do these things i am mainly talking about technical production and design uh, not necessarily the show itself but I do like to sprinkle in a little bit of review in there as well but absolutely loved it let me know in the comments what you thought and consider hitting that subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss a single one of my uploads and I will see you guys next time bye